Tom Malone is with us. We'll get, run you through the rest of the newspapers here. Um, Tom, good morning to you. How are you? Hi, Ger. I'm not great, to be perfectly honest. Well, uh, I'm, I'm sick and... Well, look, let, let's talk about it. Because, and I, I just want to give a fair warning to anybody that we are going to show the image, which is on the front of the newspapers today, um, that has caused so much consternation. And, Tom, before I get your reaction, I just want to give everybody as much information as I possibly can. So I'm going to read this statement from Gordon Elliott that came out last night. I'd like to address the speculation and rumours that have been rife since an old photo of me began circulating on social media yesterday afternoon. Firstly, I apologise profoundly for any offence that this photo has caused and can categorically state that the welfare of each and every horse under my care is paramount and has been central to the success we have enjoyed here at Cullen Trawl. The photo in question was taken some time ago and occurred after a horse had died of an apparent heart attack in the gallops. I appreciate that an initial viewing of this photo suggests it is a callous and staged photo, but nothing could be further from the truth. At what was a sad time, which it is when any horse under my care passes away, my initial reaction was to get the body removed from where it was positioned. I was standing over the horse waiting to help with the removal of the body in the course of which, to my memory, I received a call and without thinking, I sat down to take it. Hearing a shout from one of my team, I gestured to wait until I was finished. Such background information may seem, tri may seem trivial at this time. I will not allay the concerns of many people both within and outside the world of horse racing. However, I feel it's important to provide people with some context surrounding this photo to the racing community, to anyone who has worked with and loves horses, and to anyone offended by this image. I cannot apologise enough. Horse welfare and the care and attention to detail involved is absolutely at the core of everything we do here, and both myself and all the team pride ourselves on those standards. Again, I apologise for any offence caused and ask people to consider this statement as opposed to the various falsehoods and misinformation being circulated on social media. This time I'd like to stress that I continue to extend my full cooperation with the ongoing IHRB investigation. Tom, you're involved in racing, you've ride out, you've been covering racing, you've been part of the industry for your whole life essentially. Um, what was your take when you saw the photograph first and when you've kind of seen this happen and over the last uh, 24 hours or so and, and Gordon Elliott's apology last night? Um, when I, I actually saw this photo first, um, sort of, I don't know, uh, probably about last week, it was going around a little bit on sort of some WhatsApp groups and the like. And uh, my, my reaction to it between then and now in the sort of six or seven days since hasn't changed a sec. It hasn't changed a jot. I just think it's absolutely disgusting. Um, it's very, very difficult for people to see that photo and not change the perception of the person in it um, and the way they think of the animals that they work with every single day and that's a massive problem really for racing as far as i can as far as i can see because you know when we look to sell this sport to people who are not that familiar with it one of the key aspects is the love individuals have of their horses and the lengths they will go to keep them sound to resuscitate and to find their root in every single problem and the notion that you just absent-mindedly sit in them to take a phone call immediately after they passed away is, is, is complete, completely the opposite to all of that. It's the tension really I think that that exists there. These are work animals and um, and you know they're ridden hard to win races and, and yet, certainly, the industry always likes to tell us ab about the level and duty of care that they have to the animals. Yeah, and look, there is a, one aspect to this is that, I mean, you know, Gordon Elliott has not done anything wrong to the animal while it was alive. And that, that, that's probably quite clear to say, you know, uh, uh, there's no element of cruelty or anything like that. There's like this horse, like the horses have heart issues regularly that is you know it's it's a it's something that happens that they're work as you said they are working animals and i guess you know that is an aspect of maybe horse racing that needs to be communicated more and it's something that's from mark prescott i spoke about in a recent interview that that distance that is becoming between the general public and the concept of a working animal you know is an issue for society but again it's, it's that image and that notion that immediately after a horse has passed you would just absent-mindedly sit on it to take a phone call uh, which definitely, um, you know, jars with a lot of, you know, what, what we would like to think people think of their horses. And look, I, I, I've been in touch with trainers. I've been in touch with people who work in the industry, and they there is there is a there is a widespread horror at this image. I can tell you that for nothing. 
the the London Times in the back page of their newspaper, which obviously um, it's not the it's not the uh, Times Ireland edition anymore. It, this is the London paper. They're saying that um, uh, if the image is genuine, Elliot could have his license withdrawn. It's within the gift of the racing authorities to withdraw a license immediately, pending an investigation. Should the case be deemed sufficiently serious, and so it, it's not just the um, the Irish horse racing. Um, Body, the IHRB, they're investigating, but their British counterparts have said that they've asked to be kept abreast of this because obviously Gordon Elliott is going to be one of the dominant trainers at Cheltenham in two weeks' time. Yeah, as we spoke about last Thursday, Gordon Elliott is going to send approximately 56 horses to Cheltenham in what will be two weeks tomorrow. So, you know, he has been top trainer at the meeting in the past. So, you know, he will be one of their, if you think there are four main players at Cheltenham, there are really three over the last couple of years, Willie Mullins, Nicky Henderson, Gordon Elliott. They are the big three trainers that dominate Cheltenham and have done for the last four or five years. So yes, the BHA are going to be kept very much abreast of what goes on with the IHRB. Uh, the IHRB said on Saturday night that they are launching an immediate investigation. They've said since as well that they wanted to be wrapped up quickly. Uh, the problem here is, I think this falls into the rules of the, um, you know, the integrity of racing as in the image of racing um i was kind of looking through the rules last night it's it's fairly far down um but it is something that can you know obviously in, incur a significant penalty which um you know it could be right up to a suspension of your license or the like so th there is a real danger for gordon elliott here that you know a, a really really big punishment could be made today for this um the problem really is that we don't really know what the IHRB will do punishment wise because you know up until the Charles Burns case so many of their punishments have been um you know there, there, there is a very little uh they don't show their homework you know what I mean they don't show their workings when yeah. before the Charles Burns case so and um, we don't really know how they decide on what what a, what punishment is real and what you know what what's just written on the back of a beer mat so we don't know what that's going to be. Uh, there's a massive appetite for Gordon Elliott's head on a plate. But then again, that's a social media reaction, and that's probably not real either. I imagine yesterday Gordon Elliott got in touch with all of his owners, um, hopefully to come up with a better apology than he issued to the public. But um, it's intriguing to what, what will happen next, whether he will lose horses over this, whether he'll lose owners over this, because you can't just take a horse out of a yard. Like if you like the, like the horses that are going to run in Cheltenham in two weeks' time, they've been in Gordon Elliott's care for seven years at this stage. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'd, I'd be, it'd be interesting to see if horses do, at this stage of the season, take horses out of his yard. I would say it's much more likely that maybe if people are going to make a decision, they'll do so maybe towards the end of the season or perhaps decide um, that they will you know, do it maybe uh, later or maybe not send them horses next year or something like that. But... Um, it'll be intriguing to see what happens next. But well, you would imagine Gordon Elliott has been in touch. He's obviously said he's been in touch with the IHRB. He's held his hands up and he's obviously, I'd imagine he's been in touch with his owners as well. I'm sure one or two of them were certainly not impressed at what they saw over the course of the weekend. Tommy, is there a cold relationship that almost exists here between trainers and those involved in horse racing and the horses themselves? So does that exist in racing at, at every level or is this an outlier? I mean, horses dropping dead on the gallops is not a regular occurrence, but it happens. And, you know, um, you have to remember, Gordon Elliott has run more horses than anyone else. Like, Willie Mullins this year has had something like 650, 660-odd runners so far this year. Gordon Elliott has had nearly 1,100. So it's the sheer volume of horses that he deals with, and therefore, you know, yes, there will be a certain coldness towards animals getting injured because when you have when you're in the care of upwards of 400 animals accidents will happen and like i say thoroughbreds are you know they're flight animals they will get spooked they will have heart issues they will you know run through a fence and break themselves up and you know unfortunately they have to be euthanized when serious injuries occur that are unfortunately all too regular um so yes there is a certain coldness and detachment that you have to have to be able to get on with your job especially you know if you lose a horse one day, you, if you're if you lose a horse in the first lot, it's probably going to affect you. But Gordon Elliott still has, you know, four hundred other horses to take care of, and it, I'm not saying he won't. Like 
it will be very upsetting, but there has to be an element of detachment just because, I'm not saying it's a regular occurrence, but these things do happen. And I don't think you can kind of let it stop you in your tracks for a massive amount of time where it affects the other aspects of your work. Because and Gordon Elliott's like the CEO of a, a very large company that has many, many, many workers. And while horse, losing horses would be very upsetting, it's such an enormous organization. I imagine um, he, he, he doesn't really have too much time to dwell on it or get that upset about it. And, um, it's like, like I said, losing a horse is a, is a very, very sad thing for, for a bigger trainer, but you know, it is a probably all too regular occurrence for them as well. It's horse racing itself is going to have the issue with, uh, the problems around the public relations around this as well, particularly. You know, we're building up to Cheltenham and then after that comes the Grand National and they had to change the Grand National fences because the race was unsafe. So, you know, the, there's a million different aspects to this story which are going to have to get teased out. And I think it's interesting that the British authorities are putting pressure on the Irish authorities because they want to, to be seen to do that. And it's, it's easy for them to do that because they're not the ones who will ultimately be issuing any sanction. But uh, your instinct sounds to me, Tom, like there'll be a fine as opposed to a suspension. Is that kind of the... Uh I would, I, I would, I would imagine a, a fine. Would, like, I mean, this is quite a modern problem. With that requires, you know, a sort of swift resolution, which is not the way the IHRB. It's not a situation that would suit the IHRB's uh, decision-making policies as they have been in the past. Um, you know, the, normally, like the Charles Burns affair took over two years to bear itself out. And like Charles Wynn still hasn't been suspended. He's a winner yesterday. So, you know, you're talking about timelines and how things get sorted out by the IHRB. A very modern problem, like a, a an offensive photograph shared on social media. It's not the kind of situation they'll have uh, a lot of precedent for coming up, uh, coming up with a, um, coming up with a punishment for Gordon Elliott. So um, I would imagine it will be fine. Um, Again, you, ha you have to think of some of the other bad things that have happened recently in racing and where they, where they're, what those kind of punishments have been. And um, I would imagine it will be a fine. And it's sort of up to look at Gordon Elliott. It's just such an awful time for Gordon Elliott. You talk about the BHA. I mean, the BHA's time when they really just have to get in the bunker in British horse racing is March and April, when like it's coming up to a year since the coronavirus pandemic started. Cheltenham was an absolute touch point for that. And then the Grand National is always a focal point for the kind of um, anti-horse racing lobby that exists quite more vocally in the UK than it does in Ireland. So um, the BHA would just want these six weeks to pass without incident whatsoever so they can just get to the end of the Grand National without any major incidents. And now this has thrown them just the most enormous headache and there will be huge pressure on yeah. the IHRB to make a very swift decision on it. It's on the front page of the tabloids, it's on the back page of the, the London Times, so it's uh, not a great yeah. Tom, good stuff. Thanks a million for joining us this morning. Cheers.